Women in pre-colonial Philippines During the pre-colonial period, women played an important part in economic life of the community. They developed such household industries as needlework, weaving, and poultry and peg raising. They worked long hours in the fields. Negrito women also joined their main work in hunting, fishing, and gathering food. The history of women in our society should be examined in order to understand the unique situations of women in the Philippines. The Philippines situation is unique as it is unique situations rooted in the colonial history of the country. These sources indicate that there was a genuine measure of inequality among men and women during the pre-Spanish period. Even in today's Filipino community, there is one measure of equality among men and women, especially when women are involved in or even mainly responsible for mainly family income. Women thinkers in the Philippines generally agree that inequality between men and women developed in colonial times. Before colonialism, women leaders in the community. A landmark study by ethnomosociologist Nono illustrates that the Babylon traditions in the Philippines is still alive. Many Babylon are women who still function as healers, culture bearers, philosophers and negotiators, storytellers, and ritual leaders. In other words, these traditional women leaders still serve their communities as they did in ancient time. They have taken a different aspect of various communities and have learned to the ad and adapt westernized Philippine culture. In some women are, were important in the Philippine society and were genuine, genuinely equal with men in their old world view, one that did not crucial freedom of construct women as unique one. It was with coming for Spanish colonialism that Filipina was constructed differently. Women in Hispanic period. Men and women are treated equally. Had they had equal rights, women had the right to inherit property and they also had important parts in business and trading. They would wave wave the pottery and make jewelries to be used for exchanging in the market. In other tribes and other foreign traders like the Chinese. It was important for the Spaniards that the Filipino woman be completely subjected to her husband or her father and to the Catholic Church. To remove women in the alien nations of an ideal woman, they were taught to avoid sin by keeping chaste, not being vain, dressing modesty, keeping busy at home, and being self-sacrificing. The colonial the colonized created a woman who was not only active at home and withdrawn from the public sphere. It, if they allowed to seek education, women were placed in school that forced in them and values the character of the new Filipina. Filipino women were reduced to instruments for propagating the colonial system and producing the next generation that would ensure its survival. Chastity, purity, and system. Chastity, purity, and forbearance were thus promoted simply to subdue the early Filipina, that her new role and construct her creative participation in the society. While propaganda movement itself was a very male enterprise, it sought to raise the status of women. Women participation is pursuing by the Katipunan and the millennia recent suggest that Filipinas played major roles in times to conflict as leaders, soldiers, healers, and heads of logistic operation. Many outstanding Filipino women such as Gabriela Silang and Gregorian de Jesus were active participants in the war against Spain. Despite 300 years of misognistic re reorientation, women could still find their place among men if the fight for Philippine liber liberation. Other women have also taken on similar position with the Katipuna. This historical fact indicate that women during the Spanish era were key actors in the Philippines Revolution. Yet their exploit during this time 
have yet to be widely recognized. Women in the American Era Women in the United States during the 19th century organized and participated in a great variety of reform movements to improve education, to initiate present reform, to ban alcoholic drinks, and during the pre-Civil War period, to free the slaves. Three insights about women movements from the American period until martial law activism are relevant. Firstly, these movements were begun and dominated by men. Even the suffrage movement was said to have been encouraged by the Americans to distract people from the independence movement. Secondly, that women involvement in these movements gave them liberties and rules that were traditionally denied them. And the very less, it gave them the institutional framework for the participating in the outside world. From women concerned with domestic issues, they became women engaged in social issues and police making. Thirdly, that girls had objective of these movements were valid for and important to a smaller or greater sections of Filipino women. Not everyone cared about the same issues and thus, support for women movement was not strong enough to transform patriarchal system. Therefore, even if this movement allowed to participate in public spire and contribute of nation building, women were still confined to play supporting roles to the projects of men, to realm or of care which is skin to domestic work and in debt of supporting per perpetuating patriarchy. Women were also victims of violence and harassment. Despite this exploitation, the Philippines industry did not actually advance and in and interactive economic activities degraded the environment. The feminist group that emerged from the communist and socialist movement of the late 1960s and early 1970s would react against reality. The birth of militant groups with a feminist agenda. Revolutionarily, Groups that emerged in the 1960s and 1970s were associated with the communist and socialist movements. These groups argued that the nation was suffering from underdevelopment because its economy served the interest of U.S. by providing cheap labor and free access to resources, as well as by serving a dumping ground for U.S. goods. The new economic model under the American in post-war period brought about a various levels of poverty. The 10 Filipinas who advanced modern feminism in the country. So the first is Leticia Ramos Shahane. She was a former senator, chair of the National Commission on the Role of Filipino Women and United Nations Assistant Secretary General for social development and humanitarian affairs. She is one of the women who spearheaded and solely drafted conventions on the eliminations of all forms of discrimination against women, or SEDO, during the height of the international recognitions of women's human rights in 1967. Second is Patricia Benetiz Liquanan, she served as the chairperson of the Commission on Higher Education, chairwoman of the then National Commission on the Role of Filipina Women, chairperson of the Commission on the Status of Women, chairperson of the Main Committee for World Conference on Women, a co-founder of the Asia-Pacific Women's Watch, and governor of the Asia-Pacific NGO Forum in Beijing. As a graduate student of psychology, she focused her work on the problems of women, initially on the problems caused by migration. She was struck by the gender dimensions and how different issues affect women more than men. Third is Teresita Quintos Delis. She is a peace advocate, former chair and co-founder of Coalition for Peace, National Peace Conference Presidential Advisor 
on the peace process during the time of former President Benigno Aquino III and appointed lead convenor of the National Anti-Poverty Commission from 2001 to 2003. Fifth is Sister Christine Tan. She was the first Filipina to head the Philippine province of the religious of Good Shepherd, a former chairperson of the executive board of association of major religious superiors of women in the Philippines and founder of Alay Kapwa Christian Community. During the Marcos regime, she boldly issued a memorandum to all major superiors of religious men and women that they would continue publishing signs of the times, despite telegrams from Chairman Hans Minze of the Philippine Council for print media asking them to stop publishing barrios. Sixth is Joy Barrios, she was born as Maria Josephine Barrios in 1962, a popular poet, actress, scriptwriter, and activist. She earned her PhD in Filipino and Philippine literature at the University of the Philippines and has served as Associate Professor and Associate Dean of the University of the Philippine College of Arts and Letters. Seventh is Lorena Barros. Maria Lorena Barros was a woman leader, gifted writer, and one of the icons of modern Philippine feminism. She was one of the well-known heroes during the anti-dictatorship struggle who found the Malayan Kilusan ng Bagong Kababaihan or Makibaka. It is Raisa Jajuri. Attorney Jajuri is the Moro Program Coordinator of the Alternative Legal Assistance Center. In her 10 years of work with Muslim women, she founded the Women for Justice in Bangsamoro, an organization for Muslim women that conducts training community, dialogues, research, and policy advocacy. Recently, Attorney Jajuri was appointed to join the MILF Peace Panel in 2014. Ninth is Rusel Ambubuyo. She is the first visually impaired Filipina to be awarded Summa Cum Laude. Blind at the age of six, Ambubuyog did not let her disability hinder her to finish her studies. She graduated valedictorian in her elementary school and high school. She was awarded a full scholarship at the Ateneo de Manila University, where she later graduated with a bachelor's degree in mathematics with all the possible awards for students' excellence and service. Tenth is Rosa Henson. Lola Rosa was a comfort woman. In 1992, she broke the silence about Filipina women through her autobiography, Comfort Woman, Slave of Destiny. During World War II, she joined the Hukbal Hap and served as a messenger. She was forcibly taken by the Japanese forces and brought to a hospital in Angeles, Pampanga, where her ordeal as a comfort woman began at 14 years of age. She was raped and scourged by Japanese soldiers. After coming out with her story, she fought for justice for comfort women by joining demonst demonstrations and even filing a suit in Tokyo. She died in 1997 at the age of 69. Current forms of oppression against Filipino women and their responses. Women are opposed as citizens of a former colony due to the continuing effect of expo exploitative globalization. The, their membership in social class of sector of society. Those women suffer hardship not only because they are women but because they are marginalized farmers, domestic servants of factory workers. Women workers are exploited because of their gender and their economic and social position. Women in the third world.
In the Philippines, women are made to suffer particularly difficult condition because of their position as citizen of the third world. As a woman, they are even more disempowered because they are the lack of representatives with a significant voice to air, concern and prioritize their welfare. This situation clearly evident in the Philippines government difficulties in enforcing pro-women law changing structure that repress women. Some groups focus on sectoral concern such as organization of recent laborers made wives and response their sector needs group and also organize themselves in self help group for margina mar marginalized women for instance of co cooperatives or livelihood organizations tactical feminism in the philippines debates within the women sector revolve around question of strategies and policies for women liberation rather than issue regarding women's definition and conceptual position it is important to know because it's mark of the character of philippines feminism philippine feminism hard work strategical with the state or with political and civil society movement of future the welfare of women